Hello fellows and ladies. As usual, thanks for for looking in. Um, I'll just adjust here so you can see me better. There you go. Um, right, today, I've got a slight change of pan. Uh, last time I said I would be doing a video about the, the mini the mini consoles, um, the, uh, the USB plug and play jobbies, uh, which have become rather popular. Unfortunately, I've been unable to source um, a Mega Drive Mini at the sort of price I wanted to pay. Um, and I've been too lazy to get to pick up the PlayStation Classic. So um, until such time as I can get those two organised, um, I'd rather not go without them. You know, so um, you know, hopefully by, by next video or the one after, I'll be doing the... Uh, the five mini consoles that hopefully I'll have plus those little um, arcade machines that you see behind me there which are a mini mini arcade games rather nice so staying on the small theme um, I thought today we might have a look at um, some of the handheld consoles which have been popular in the past not so much now because of the advent of gaming on mobile phones and what have you and switch um, now I've never I must admit I've never really been much of a, a mobile game you know a gamer on the move so I've never really uh, used handhelds that much um, I think probably the original Game Boy was the one I used the most back in the day but I, I, I don't have one of those anymore so I can't show you that but um, yeah I mean it's, it's one of the reasons main reason I've never really bothered to buy a Switch because um, the, the main advantage of that obviously is so you can play handheld um, and uh, you know it's just never appealed to me but I do have I mean the, the collection that I have is I mean, I mean I would say I was just a casual collector of um, of handhelds um, I, um, I, I don't have a definitive collection you know there's quite a few of the more exotic and um, and larger uh, machines that I don't have, but um, you know, I've, I've got a few I can show you with uh, with some games. Um, there again, I, I've never really been a, a collector of handheld games either, so um, the selection I have is pretty meagre, you know, compared with some of the other stuff I showed you. But nevertheless, I think it's an area um, worth worth a look at. It, um, even even if not in in in, de in the depth that I would would have hoped, but that's not to say that sometime in the future I won't um, be picking up some of that. I mean, I would love a PC Engine GT, which is the handheld version of the PC Engine um, Game Gear, perhaps Atari Lynx, um, and the one that, that Sega did. Um, but um, you know, for the moment, um, there there are other things that. Um, that take a priority but anyway let's get into it um right the f place to start i suppose is the nintendo ds very popular machine Got a nice little sock for it as you can see there um so just putting it out yeah that was the box standard um box standard version of the ds um just open it up and uh, Yes, you just bung your, bung your cartridge in, in the top there. I've got something stuck in there. Um, yeah, so DS, very, very popular machine. Um, I, I forget which year that came out, 2004. I don't know, memory memory fails me on a lot of these, uh, these dates, but... Um, yeah, uh, I mean, there's handheld gaming. I mean, a lot of people still use them, and there's handheld gaming go. You know, it was um, it was the apex at the time. Um, I um, although I've never collected actively for it, um, I do have a few games I can show you. Uh, mainly uh, shoot them, shoot them ups, car games, and, and arcade conversions. Uh, not a, not a great selection, but worth looking at nevertheless. Um, yeah, there's um, there's Nana Strays, a shooting, a shooting game, shmup as we call them. Um, 
Yeah, I mean these these shooters for most machines now are not you know they're not they're not scarce, but they're not that easy to find at a decent price. Let's put it that way. Um, so you know, I was I, I've, I've I think I got all these from Kex mainly at uh, you know reasonable prices. It's certainly under all under a tenner for sure. I think most of them around about the fiver mark. So you know, I'm always willing to pay that sort of money for for decent condition schmups. Um, and then we have the, the sequel Nun Straight 2. Um, it's to say it's, it's a side, uh, it's a, um, side scroller uh, or a vertical scroller or both. Um, but I remember it, it's, it's, it's quite a decent game on the DS. Um, of course, the only, the only problem with that sort of game is that it's very hard to see on the, on the small DS screen. But... Um, Nevertheless, uh, well worth playing. Uh, that's that's um, that's a more scarce uh, game, shooting game, uh, Japanese uh, game that for some reason came out over here. Um, Bangayo Spirits. Um, there again, I uh, it's it's a it's a it's a horizontal scroller with some weird mechanics. Um, but it uh, certainly qualifies um, as a shmup, and I think may be an arcade conversion from from the from the Japanese arcades. Um, this one probably be more familiar to you, um, Geometry Wars Galaxy, because um, this this was all over Xbox um, Live and uh, Xbox Store and uh, PSN. Um, it's one of those grid sort of like grid games where you have to knock off. Uh, various shapes uh, that fly around the screen in increasing numbers and um, yeah I mean it, it's good fun um, again I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily recommend the DS screen to play it but um, if that's all you've got well yeah it's a good game good fun I really I really like it on all the machines I've had it on and then we move on to a couple of racing games uh, Trackmania DS um, not a, not a great game on the PC. I played this quite a lot, and it's um, it's it's a really fun game. Um, one of those twitch games, you know, where you've got to be really sharp around corners uh, to get anywhere, because it's like a time attack uh, type of jobby. So yeah, um, that, that's that's quite decent on the DS. And then um, you never will need for speed nitro. Now that that is a different version from. From any other Need for Speed game that's ever appeared on PS3 or PS4 or whatever machine, you know. Um, but um, yeah, I remember it being being fairly entertaining. Quite nice graphics, as I remember. And that's just one of these box standard asphalt games that you can play on. Uh, you can play on the phones now. Um, that's for Urban GC, as you can see the price there, three quid. Sticker's not off because I can't get it off without uh, sticky in the box up, something rotten. So <laughs> I thought it'd be easy to leave the price on. Um, yeah, as I say, just a box standard racing game, that one. For some reason, that one comes in a, in a weird box, but um, I don't know. And then I'm a big fan of pinball games, so thought we'd have a look at that. Metroid pinball, it's quite decent, actually. Um, it uses both both the screens on the DS, as you can see from the, the shots on the back. Uh, you might not be able to see them very well, but um, yeah, I quite enjoyed playing that. That was uh, that was good fun. And then, uh, of course, Arkanoid. That's um, one of the very basic knock the bricks out games. You know, where you just got the screen, knocking everything out, advancing to the next level. I think most people will be. Fairly familiar with Arkanoid. Um, I'm going to say on the DS, it's just as good fun as anywhere else. Um, and that's the um, bubble bubble. Yeah, that's the one with it where you knock the bubbles out in patterns of three. You know, very much like most of the puzzle games now, um, where you just knock a block of three out and they disappear and you just carry on. That's uh, that's actually an American version, so. As you can see from the from the category there, 
uh, but it uh, works okay on a UK power machine and then pan. That's another bubble type game where you just run around the ship knocking out bubbles and proceed to the next level. So yeah, that I mean that's that's all I have for the DS. It's not a not a very solid selection, but um, all decent games and um, you know, I might add to them one day. So that was your that was your Nintendo DS. I'll just re sock it. Uh, stick it over there. Right, okay, let's have a look at one of the older machines. Um, as well, of course, that's the, that's the PSP, the ordinary PSP. Um, now, I've never, I've never ever collected uh, for the PSP um, those UMD sort of like carts. Um, I think I might have one looking about somewhere, a Ridge Racer, which is unboxed. I think it was given to me with the machine when I bought it. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I've never really played much games on the PSP. I, I mean, this one has uh, got custom firmware in it, which enables me to, to play um, emulation like MAME and um, emulate some of the other machines, um, Mega Drive, SNES and what have you. Um, so that's all I've really used this for, but um, yeah, I mean, it's got a solid catalogue of games. I just haven't got any. <laughs> so that's your, that's your PSP. I've actually got it, I've actually got it stuck up with tape there because that keeps something wrong with that and it keeps dropping off when I'm playing. So I thought we'd, uh, we'd tape it up. It looks horrible, but it works. Um, now... This is uh, one, I, I haven't had this one too long, and there again, it's another game that I haven't got. Another machine I haven't got too many games for, just a couple. Um, let's see, Game Boy Advance. Um, now there's many, there's many sort of like types. You can buy a different, you can buy special versions, you know, Zelda versions and all of this carry on, but... Um, that's just a bog standard blue one. I think you can get a silver one. I've seen one with with kind of black motifs over it. Um, yeah, I think there's very many you can um, you can get, but that's to say that's just one of the, the standard ones. Um, it's um, not a bad size screen, um, and it, I, like, I like the way it just you know just folds up. It's a nice and neat. Fits in your pocket very nicely. Um, and yeah, there's your, your slot at the back for your games. I've only got a couple and they're both unboxed. That's Wave Race. That's just an ordinary Game Boy Color game. Um, I just love I just loved Wave Race on the N64. It's the only reason I picked that up. It's only a couple of quid. And then um, that's a Spyro. Um, I just bought that because I used to like the Spyro games on the on the, on the PS One. Um, so yeah, that was the Game Boy Advance. Now, here's an interesting machine. This is um, I, I, I love the way this is is um, this is packaged here. It's in a little leather case, and you just you just pull that out, and then the machine comes out with it. Um, right now, this is the this is the PSP Go. Um, now I do I do remember when this came out. This came out in two thousand and nine, and it was actually discontinued in. Well, they stopped supporting it. <coughs> no, sorry, they stopped making it in in twenty eleven. So it didn't have a very long shelf life. Um, now aesthetically, I I, f I find this I find this a very nice machine. I mean, it's smart looking you know it's um it's very nicely put together and of course you have the you just pull it out and there you have your your pads and your buttons and what have you little analog pad there um now this um i mean yes psp was a success this was an absolute failure um, it doesn't have a drive in it, so 
it only it only supports uh, downloaded games and um, I mean this is virtually useless to most people because <clears throat> the, uh, the the store closed down I think in 2017 so I, mean, I don't know if there's anywhere you can go to <clears throat> to download games for it now but uh, you certainly can't go to anywhere official um, and I mean as as with most machines that are download only it just just died a death which is a shame because as I say it's a lovely looking machine I mean aesthetically it's probably the best handheld I've seen and the way it just sort of like folds up you know into a into a very small package and then back in there um, but um, yeah it was unfortunately a, a major flop um, I just don't think people you know despite the fact that um, people are always on about download being the future I just don't think that people like download only machines but that's just my opinion okay moving on um, let's have a look at the have a look at the 3DS now um, I did I did a video not so long ago on my 3DS game collection and of course I showed you this so you've probably already seen it it's a very smart little machine clicks right out um, yeah, I apologise for the light but it's uh, getting evening time here now and I'm using artificials and um, yeah you can't see that very well. it's a bit better um, yeah I mean it's, it's a lovely looking machine that I mean you, you came in three colours red and something else gold or, or silver I can't remember but um, yeah I mean I mean it was a it was a success for Nintendo after the the misery of um, the Virtual Boy which came out many moons ago and it does work um, so there's been a there's been a new version of this this is just the 3DS and there was a um, there was a 3DS XL oh this is sorry this is no this is the second generation there was a 3DX 3DS um, this I can't remember what this was this one was called but then they brought out another version of it which um, Strangely enough, only only ever had one game that supported the new uh, specs, uh, which was a weird decision by Nintendo. But then again, uh, Nintendo are a law under themselves. Um, yeah, so as I say, a lot of you might have seen that one already. Um, okay, we'll move on now to a machine that I like very much that I have actually got um, a few games for. If I can just bring them forward. So you can see them. You have to excuse me, I'm losing my voice already. Yeah, I mean, uh, this machine I, I did use quite a bit when I first got it. Um, the Vida. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I think the general consensus was that this was a, a bit of a fail, but... Um, I think the only reason that people kind of sh didn't buy it, I mean, I, I must admit I was I was wary when, when I first bought the one. Um, I didn't pay like full price for it, though, you know, I didn't buy it when it first came out, I wasn't an early adopter. But I think the reason that it kind of failed in a lot of people's minds was because of the, the cost of um, the memory cards. Um, I mean, even even a basic cheap memory card, uh, just about four gig was, I don't know, about a tenner or something. I know the bigger ones, thirty-two gig ones, were about forty quid. Well, people are not keen on 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 shilling out forty quid just to save on, and you know, uh, um, PlayStation decided that they would use their own proprietary memory cards um, so there was no way around it you know you had to pay and I mean most people would need um, large storage if you're going to especially if you're going to start downloading games you know which uh, you know I've got a lot on there and I've got a lot on the two memory cards that I do have but um, yeah that I think that um, 
that memory card price kind of spoiled it in many ways. Um, but having said that, it is a very, very, very nice machine. Um, I mean, the graphics are wonderful. Um, and as I say, I did, I did use it quite a bit. Um, but strangely, from a collector's point of view, it's not a good machine to collect for because um, the price of second, I mean, I mean, there's not many, there's no games produced for it now that I'm aware of, but even when they, when they were coming out thick and fast, um, the price of those games now, second-hand market, are quite steep. Um, I mean, I only have, what, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, I only have 15 games for it, and I've had this machine for many years now. Um, and the reason is, you know, I wasn't prepared to pay um, the second-hand prices uh, for them. And, I mean, it's a machine that was so common. Most of the second-hand games I bought um, are sort of like brand spanking new. You wouldn't tell the difference. Um, so I'll just show you a few. That's, um, I remember the name. That's Street Fighter X Tekken. Um, Let's say they're, they're very, very dinky there. Little card in there, you can see how I mean, it's tiny. Uh, but it, with most of these, you didn't get any sort of um, any sort of a manual or anything. You know, maybe just a little advertising card. So they, it, it was e they were easy to collect for a second hand because you didn't have to worry about uh, missing manuals or anything like that. You know, or or DLC or you know anything like that. Um, so then we had Call of Duty Black Ops Declassified. I mean, some of these I picked up cheap from um, cash converters. That was the where I got them from. I obviously didn't realise how much <laughs> they were going for second hand, and you know I picked up some of these rather cheaply. Um, then we have Need for Speed Most Wanted. Uh, very, very, very similar to the PS4 version. And World Rally Championship 3. I, mean, I don't know what sort of numbers these games were produced in, and I, and I, I really don't understand why the, why the second-hand prices have stayed so high, but for some reason for it, maybe people are not getting rid of their games. About 20, 20, 48. As I saw, all these games are very, very playable, very nice looking. There's another one of those asphalt games, uh, pretty average. And my favourite game, Ridge Racer. A number of machines I've bought just to play Ridge Racer. I think I bought this just to play the Ridge Racer game. Um, I think this is probably about the fourth machine I bought just to play a Ridge Racer game, uh, which is a bit crazy, but I just like Ridge Racer. Uh, I think that's, that's only there because I got it for coppers. Little Deviants, um, very, very cheap. I've never played it, so I wouldn't know what it's like. Um, it's the old Monkey Ball, Banana Splits, uh, there again. Uh, not a bad little game, you know, it's, um, but it's uh, reasonably cheap as I remember, then I remember I got this cheap, Gravity Rush, and the game everybody goes bonkers over, but I'm really not that fussed, Uncharted, Golden Abyss, I did play it a little bit, but tried it on the PS3, I came out at first did it, or was it PS4, I can't remember, I think it was PS3, and I really didn't like it much at all, <coughs> um, but I don't like third person, so that might account for it, and then the mandatory, obligatory FIFA football, not the greatest version, but if you want a football game, uh, virtual tennis, for another cheapo, quite playable, as I remember. 
Nice little golf game there, everybody's golf. Uh, it's come out on most of the PlayStation machines, I think. And then last but not least, we have um, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom. So as you can see, um, not the greatest of collections, but um, as I said, I'm often horrified by the, the price of <clears throat> second-hand games. So we come to the last, which I think is my most recent purchase. Um, and that is the, the Neo Geo Pocket Colour. Once again, you can get that in very many versions. Um, that's the see-through version. Um, it's got a nice backlit screen and um, cartridges pop in there. Uh, that particular one is um, Fatal Fury. Very small cartridges, but um, then we have Sonic, Sonic Adventure. Well, that one, that one I got very cheaply because it was unboxed. Uh, Metal Slug. Um, yeah, the only reason I got that for about 20 quid was... I mean, some of these games are quite expensive. The only reason I got that for 20 quid is because uh, there was no box with it and I thought it was a, a good buy at that price. Um, and then recently I bought this from, from Kex... Uh, Natural boxed copy of Pac Man. Very nice little boxes actually, they're just uh, unclip and then they've got a little manual inside and that holds the game. I really must get round to uh, trying to increase. Well, that came with it as well, I don't know what the heck that is. If anybody knows, let us on a postcard to let me know the trouble these boxes are on clip is that they're swine to get open yeah so I, I, I haven't a clue what those two little rings are for but um, I doubt somebody might uh, might have a clue yeah so um, those I like those boxes I'll have to hunt down a few more Neo Geo color games but um, yeah as I say these these I think I this was unboxed, so um, I don't know, it was about forty-five quid or something. But um, some of the some of the rarer editions in a box, you know, are going to set you back about seventy-five. Um, but it's a nice one to have because um, obviously the Neo Geo games were very popular in the arcades, <clears throat> and then the cost of an actual Neo Geo machine now in the games is horrendous. So I suppose that's the next best thing. Yeah, okay, so there we have it, guys. That's my moderate collection of, of, of handhelds. Um, I hope you found it uh, reasonably enjoying and enlightening. Uh, hopefully next time we'll, we'll, do the, we'll do the mini consoles, although there might be a pickups before then. I don't know, it just depends um, how the search goes. Anyway, for now, uh, thank you as always uh, for looking in. Thank you for... The subscriptions that still continue to, to come in slowly, so um, I'd appreciate a few more, and a few more comments would be nice as well. Um, but um, until next time, uh, I'll see you later. Bye-bye now.